This may be a bit of a long tutorial. This was from a request I got on Reddit. So someone wanted to figure out how to create this page from the app store. So you can kind of click on it and it expands outward. You can kind of go through this content, but when you close it, it looks like it went exactly to the same place it came from. So I can go down here, I can grab even video games. Notice its start point is a little bit different. I can look around and then I can just close it up, all right? And that is pretty much what the app store looks like on the today page of the tab. So if you look at the today page on the app store on an iPhone, this is what you see, okay? And you can kind of get to styling as you like, but this is the base idea, all right? So for this, I had some sample data and sample images. I drag and drop my sample images. Um, just for, I picked some four images off the internet, and I just made random lorem ipsum, um, essentially lo random lorem ipsum content for the text data, okay? So you can do whatever you want when it comes to picking your own data. But let's kind of get started, okay? So I'm gonna start by creating a new project. <clears throat> Create a single view app, we'll call this uh, code tutorial underscore app store. Okay. This was a pretty involved tutorial to be honest with you, so we're gonna kind of be going back and forth between my finished product and copying some of that over and discussing some of the functions instead of trial and erroring as I had to do. So Geometry Reader was pretty integral to the creation of this uh, tutorial. And these guys. Let's go to image assets. I'm just going to first. I'm going to drag up my old images. So that's something I can do. But you can have to pick your own images. All right. So I'm going to grab these four. I'm going to put them in here. Okay. And then I'll go back to my content view for each of those. Okay. So where are we? We're at square one. We have absolutely nothing other than hello world. So let's start by creating some of the key pieces here, and that's going to be first the struct, okay? So let's take the struct, okay, and let's look through it. I'm creating an item, and uh, we're going to name something called item. It's going to be adhere to identifiable, which means I'm going to give it a UUID, okay? Um, it's just good practice in general to make most things identifiable, in my opinion. You know, if you have another opinion, please toss it in the uh, comments below. Um, but so I always give it a name. A description, a subtitle, and an image. And so that would be corresponding to, if you look at this, that's the name, the subtitle, the description, and the image. Okay? So those are the pieces that I kept. And then we need to keep a couple different things. So let's start by going to these state variables. Let's grab all the state variables first. Okay? So let's talk about each one of those and what they're going to be doing. So Dragon, put them inside here, underneath content view, but before body. Okay, and we're gonna have uh, ex an expanded item, so that's gonna that's gonna be holding the item that we choose to click on. So, right now, for reference, there is no expanded item, but when I click on this, the expanded item will be all the content that was inside of here. All right, and that's what gets passed gets passed into the expanded view. Okay, start point determines where I am the minute I click, so that way it knows to start here and then expand up to the size of the screen. And then the return point is what allows it to know how to shrink back down, okay? So return point is dictating essentially the frame. This is, it's the same as start point, and it, it's the same as what start point initially was the minute you had clicked. You'll see that start point will change to something that will allow it to actually expand outwards after, okay? So then we have expanded screen underscore shown, okay, and that's essentially going to be dictating a lot of the animations here, and the size changes. And then we have will hide, and will hide will serve one specific function, but essentially it's a binary that will determine specifically if one of these transitions will occur, okay, or if one of them will be animated. Okay, so that was the first thing. Now I'm going to take items. That's my personal sample data, okay. So you can uh, kind of just create your own random data by creating a bunch of, and it's, it's an array of items, okay? So it is an array, just so you understand the content of this array, I'm just going to say this because it won't make a difference, it's items, or item. So it's an array of these objects, you just create a bunch of them, okay? So that's that, as you can see. And then the next thing I want to do is 
Let's go ahead and start with, I think we never even ended up using image height. Okay. We'll keep both of them for now. So we have item height and image height. I'm going to bring those over. Okay. And so that's going to be dictating essentially the size of these right here. Okay. So then I'm going to grab the SV width. Okay. And the reason I need this is because of the fact that we're using geometry reader. A lot of times things like to be, you know, if, if in general SwiftUI likes having things in the center, uh, sometimes geometry reader likes to put things on the left. So I'm keeping this so we can set up padding and stuff so that way we have a nice, you know, a nice perfectly centered item. Okay. So now let's go over here and let's look at what we have. Okay. So this is essentially this entire application, I would say, is a Z, it's one big Z stack. Okay. And behind it is a white background. On top is a scroll view. And on top is the expanded view that you currently can't see. But what it does is it, the minute I click on something, the expanded view, while it's completely transparent, gets into proper position for the start, and then it shows itself, and then it act, but it's identical to what is behind it, and then it expands outwards. Okay, and when you hide it, it goes back to its original spot, and then just fades away. But you wouldn't see the fade or anything like that because it looks exactly like what is directly behind it. Okay, so it requires a lot of precise managing of where things were, down to you know even fractions of a pixel. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say inside here, we're going to have a Z stack, okay? Z stack. Okay. And that Z stack, the first thing in it is going to be this color dot white dot edges ignoring it all. Okay. So once you do that, the next thing, next thing you're going to do is we're going to look at the next thing in here. The next thing in here is this right here, okay? So that is this H stack right here. Okay, we're gonna grab the entire H stack and let's talk about what's in it. So what we have, actually the next thing in there, charge I should say is a scroll view. So this is the project we're working on together. You can look at the names here to know what was my old one. And my new one. Okay, so you you want to make sure you follow the code tutorial under Scrap Store. So directly on top of my white pick white um, color right there is going to be there we go. so directly on top. What we're going to have is there we go. We're going to put the scroll view, and inside of it, we'll put the H stack. Okay, so that H stack essentially has just the title. Okay, so it's going to have a V stack. We'll, we'll hit resume so we can look at that together. It's pretty straightforward. It's going to have, you know, a date of some sort. I hard coded a value for a date, but you can put whatever you want, you know. So I put today's date, and I said it's today, and then I stylized it accordingly. So this one said um, it was a font of size 18, bold, and it was gray. And the other one was font of size 40, bold, and black. Okay. That's how I got something that looked kind of like the original one. Okay, and now that I got that H stack, I'm just going to go ahead and close that up a little bit. Okay, and so what goes underneath the H stack in here? If we look, what we're looking for is all the content in here. Okay, so once we got that H stack, let's get rid of that. And let's look at this for each loop now, okay? So, this for each loop is the only thing left inside of scroll view, okay? So, let's let's take a peek at everything inside of it. So, I'm going to say scroll view rotates right back for each start and for each end. Okay, that's how we know we have people have gotten through this or sitting through and talking about everything in here. Okay. So the way we what we what we have in here is we said for each, and then we said for each item inside of items, okay? And then we'll say each one is we'll refer to it from during this inside this closure as this item. Okay. And then we will have a geometry reader inside of for each, and it's going to return 
in any view. I didn't have to make it optional, but I did. Uh, I just always do that to be honest in case somehow during the coding process I decide that I want to um, I want to use this a little differently. So I'm gonna actually I can just make it say any view. I can un I can make it just completely not optional. And so what I'm creating is I'm creating essentially any any view, and I'm gonna minimize one of these so you can see where it starts and ends. Click. So with any view, and what really matters is what's inside of it. So Inside of it, we're going to have a Z stack, okay? And the Z stack has an image, okay? And then on top of the image, it has a button, okay? And so that button and the image are the exact same size. So you can see button, image, exact same size, all right? But the image, it makes you, the biggest thing you want to make sure you do is so you have a Z stack inside of an any, so any view, Z stack, okay? And that Z stack, you want to make sure you give it that proper corner radius right here. Okay, so we can minimize this. You can take a look at it. Okay, so your any view needs to have a Z stack with a corner radius of 15, a foreground color of white. That's going to make your life easy when you start coding these fonts. Okay, and you want to give it that shadow. And I gave it not quite a black shadow. I used it for color. What I said was the color is going to be equal to uh, init. And then it lets you use an RGB, uh, RGB like a color space. So I said 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and that's on a scale of 0 to 1. So it's a pretty dark color. It's almost black. It's just a really dark gray. I gave it a radius of 11. Okay, and I gave it a, um, a no offset in the X dimension, but I gave it a uh, an offset of 4 in the downwards direction. Okay. So now inside of that Z stack, all right, is the image. Okay, and then it's essentially fetching the images from. So you're probably wondering, what is this item.image, right? And it is the image attribute of the items, which is just a string. And the reason it's just a string is because, for instance, in, in my sample data, we have image one, image two, image three. And so that's referring to my asset library, image one, two, three, four. Okay. So that's what that is. Let me close that back up. And so we have um, an image that is the image that it's using is this item dot image. So it's grabbing the item with the same string in the assets library. We're saying it's resizable. I'm going to use scale to fill. I'm going to say the frame, okay, is going to be equal to. So it says frame is equal to width of self to SV width. And if we scroll back up, we look at what it is. That's equal to the main bounds width that's from here to here minus 40. That's because we put a 20 and a 20 offset, okay? So I just gave it its width, all right? And then I said its height is equal to <clears throat> item height, so equal to 500, okay? And then I said clipped, so it, let, it clips off all the excess. And I said the background is going to be color.white, and the foreground is color.green. These are kind of irrelevant. I didn't use either of those, you know? Um, I would leave the background as white just as like a safeguard in case somehow an image goes wrong, at least it's not green or some funky color. And then let's look at what is on top. So on top of that image is this button, okay? So the button is essentially, it's all the other text and all these items you have on top, okay? So let's look at the contents of the button, then we'll look at the action of the button, okay? So the contents of the button. A lot of this, you know, looks like a lot inside this button. So it's from here all the way down this is all the contents of the button okay and the reason it looks so dense is because there's so much styling in there okay so what i did is i put a, a the entire contents is one big v stack okay and then inside that v stack is an h stack a spacer to make it more readable okay it's going to be an h stack that's this okay that's what's going to be here even though it looks like we have a v stack don't don't just don't look at that for a second. Just understand that there's an H stack. And hit resume, so you can see what I'm talking about. There is an H stack that is just from here to here. So you see that? That's the H stack. Okay. So the property inspector will show you. See that blue outline? That's the H stack. And then that's the spacer. Doesn't show you because it's it's literally it doesn't show you because it's right here, but it's this small. Okay. It's, it has it has a width of zero. And then here's the other H stack. Okay, so H stack, H stack, and spacer in between. Now, 
we did is we said that the button has a frame of sv.width. That's the same as the image, okay? So they have the matching widths, okay? And then we're going to have the uh, h stack. If you look inside of that, first the top h stack, it's another v stack. So why did I put an h stack in a v stack? I did that so I could put the spacer and shove everything in that h stack to the left. Because in Geometry Reader, sometimes it's hard to get things to align the way you want them to, okay? So I had to put the everything in an h stack so I could shove the whole thing to the left, all right? So you have a button with a v stack, remember, and there was h stack, spacer, h stack, okay? And in that top h stack, I have a v stack and a spacer, okay? That v stack has an alignment of leading that's letting these leading edges align up. And I gave it padding because if I had just shoved it to the left, it would have completely been to the left. So I give it a padding, give it a nice look. And then I put the top title. And I said it's going to be equal to, remember, we're running through a for each loop and we're using this item to refer to each item. So this item does subtitle. Okay. And then we have a font of uh, 15, sorry, 18. It's bold and its color is 0.8. Um, it's like a, a white on the with that's a point eight. So I can actually what I should have started doing is I should have started doing this. I should this is the proper way to do it. White. It's the same principle, right? So I'm saying it's a white on a scale of you know black being zero and white being one. This is a point eight. So it's pretty light gray, okay? And then I give an opacity of zero point six. All right, and then the one underneath it. Same principle. I gave um, it's a text with this name, this item dot name, font size of thirty six. It's going to be bold. And the reason it's white is because remember down here on the overall thing we gave it a foreground color of white, so it just adhered to its parent. Okay. So that explains the top H stack. Okay. And the bottom one is pretty much the same thing. So if you're going to see a V stack, okay, you're going to see a text item that's padded. And it has a spacer shoving it to the left, otherwise it would have been centered. Okay. And this item dot description is its contents. But this one I gave it a line limit of two. Okay. And um, and then I gave it a font of 18, weight of bold, the foreground color of 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9. Or same principle, I can just say white. And I can get rid of that. Give an opacity of 0 0.8. All right. And there's that. So that explains how this screen right here is built. All right, so that's the contents of, remember, we were looking at how we have an image, and we have the button on top, which is all the text. But what goes inside, well, actually, before we, before we talk about the, the action of this button, okay, we're going to get back to that. The last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this because we don't want that anymore. The last thing I'm going to do is we're going to look here at the formatting of, if we look at, each item in the for each, we're going to look at its formatting. So the height of each of these items, okay, is it's for, first of all, it's going to have a background a color of clear dot opacity of 0 0.4, okay. And there's a lot of things here that that seem kind of funny because it's hard in along the process. There's a lot of glitches that come in or or little nuances that come in with geometry reader. So there are a lot of things we have to do when it comes to like for instance, making an animation 0 0.05 seconds versus completely just zero. Well, sometimes uh, it's, it, it doesn't even adhere to the delay that we had tried to give it unless we give it a time that's not zero. So we give it something that's so small that it's essentially zero, but since it's greater than zero, it adheres to everything that followed it. So sometimes things look kind of like a little menial and you can fiddle with them. You can try to minimize this code by getting rid of pieces, but I'm just used, using everything I needed, okay? so. Uh, you're going to give this view here a background uh, of color dot clear dot opacity of 0 0.4, okay, and its f its its frame is going to be self to item to height, and it, you're going to what you're doing is you're giving it a padding of 20 on the left, okay, 20 on the right, so leading is left, trailing is right, bottom is 20. That's why this blue thing is going so large, okay. That's why it's bigger than this and bigger than that. So notice that this 20, okay, this is 20 on the left and 20 on the right. That's why we made the width of this item UI screen dot main dot bounds at width minus 40 because we have 20 plus 20. It's on either side, all right? And then the next thing we had is the coordinate space of four each. Okay, so the reason we have this coordinate space of four each, you'll see it in the next section where we talk about the button, the action of this, okay? 
Um, but it helps geometry reader understand where this where the item is in the um, in the in the actual well actually to be honest actually I think we might not have even used it but it's funny actually we didn't even use it but what this would let us do is theoretically you know we can use um, a function to determine where we are in the scroll by saying you if you look inside the action actually I'll save this for the end and you just realize that this is not necessary for now okay you can add it if you want and I can I can explain to you its implications as we go but as of now it's not needed okay so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look inside the, the action of the button okay remember this is all one big button okay so the first thing you're gonna do in this button is you're gonna say self dot expanded item is equal to this item so you're saying the item that you're about to expand is this one so it understands what content is gonna be expanded and then you're going to use the geometry reader to figure out where this button is on the screen. So you're going to say geo.frame.inglobal min x that tells you the x offset and the y offset. Okay, that's what min x and min y are. Then you're going to create a rect, okay, that has x of x, y equal to y. Okay, the width is going to be equal to the sv width. And the height is uh, for this rect is going to be equal to the item height. Okay, and then you're going to set the start point and the return point equal to this rect, okay? And you're going to set the expanded item. Oh, we already did this, actually. So we can get rid of the that extra line of code, okay? And so the next thing in here is you're going to set a timer, okay? And the minute that you t choose all of this stuff here, you're going to set a timer for 0.3 seconds. Well, essentially, I mean, this might even be overkill, but we're setting a timer waiting for your phone to register all this new information, okay? And the minute it does, you're going to say expanded screen underscore shown equals true, okay? And that is going to set off a chain reaction of uh, visual changes, okay? But the point is we're waiting 0.3 seconds. We put an interval here or a timer. So timer does schedule timer. We set the time interval 0.3. We're not repeating it. And we're just saying the expanded screen is going to be equal to, or whether it's shown will be equal to true. And then we're going to set the expanded screen start point, remember, we just set it to this rect. But 0 0.3 seconds later, we're going to set it to UI screen dot main dot bounds dot size dot width. So we're saying width, we're going to change it to be the entire width of the screen, the entire height of the screen as well, with absolutely no offset. So what that does is we're saying we're giving it 0 0.3 seconds for the expanded view to get here. And then after 0 0.3 seconds, we're setting its new expanded coordinates. Okay. So what that is, is the minute I click this, it's going to set up the, our, our expanded view here, and then it has 0.3 seconds to expand out, okay? So watch. That's what it is. So it's a second view that's getting on top, okay? So where do we find that second view that's going to end up on top? That is going to be the next thing we're going to build, okay? So that's the entire action, by the way. That is the entire action. You're going to set the timer, expanded screen, underscore shown equals true, and then expanded screen, underscore start point, you're changing that. Notice the return point. We left it as this rect. So that way, as we change the start point and let it expand out, we still have a return point that lets us know where it needs to go back to when we close it. Okay? So scroll view. All right, let's look back over here. All right, so we're done with the scroll view. Now we have just the, we have roughly, we have a good amount of code actually left still to cover. We have almost half the code. So next up, we have this expanded view right here. So geometry reader is the, what we're using as the expanded view, okay? So first let's go ahead and just create geometry reader. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna take this part right here. So we're gonna create a geometry reader. Okay. And then I'm going to take everything that was after it too. And we can, sorry, I'm going to close that geometry. I did close that geometry reader. I'm going to make sure we have edges ignoring safe area dot top. And then the rest of the animations that we'll be working through. Okay. So. So I'm going to, yeah, sorry about that. So I'm going to take this right here. Okay. And so. 
what this is, let's just add anything random inside of. I'm going to return an empty and a view for now. Okay. All right, and so we're saying this geometry reader is going to have edges ignoring safe area of top. Okay, and then essentially we're setting up an opacity of expand the the opacity of this of the of the geometry area that's hanging out on top of all this. If the expanded screen is shown, if it's set to true, then it'll have an opacity of one. But if it's not set to true, then it'll have an opacity of zero. And so that essentially is saying whether or not the geometry reader over expanded view is shown will be determined by whether or not we have clicked this button because when you click this button remember 0.3 seconds later expanded screen shown becomes true otherwise it's default is to be uh, uh, false so now we're looking inside this um, inside this any view I'm gonna put some random anything in here just so it stops giving me this error and we can look at some, the auto completion okay so now let's look at what was inside of this geometry reader. All right, there is undoubtedly a lot in here. Okay, so let's go piece by piece. The first thing I need to do is I need to set, we're going to create um, a variable in here, a constant that we can work with. So we're going to say, let this item equal self.expanded item. Okay, instead of having to write self.expanded item over and over, we're going to have that there to let us continue to use that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do inside there is let's look at the overall architecture of this. You'll find that its architecture actually looks really familiar. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put a Z stack here, okay? So, and what we're creating is we're creating the fact that we have this big thing and we have this little button right here, okay? So I'm gonna add that button first. All right, and that's gonna be here. So essentially I'm using just an image the system name xmark.circle.fills as an SF symbol, giving it a foreground color of like a really light gray. Uh, size of font, so font, you know, it adheres to font uh, policies or procedures, protocols. So I'm giving it font of uh, system size 25, and I'm giving it a padding so it has a bit of space. Um, and then I'm going to have its opacity is going to essentially mimic that of the entire view. Uh, what else? But the difference is actually is that I always wanted to animate because what you'll find is that the opacity of this right here, if I'm clicking on it, it's actually getting into position first and then it's completely turning uh, completely opaque with no transition. So that way we don't have extra lag time. And then it transitions as it expands outwards. All right. So the other, and in contrast, I want this to be. Um, transitioning no matter what. I always want it to give me a nice, because it will be off to the corner here, I always need it to fade in and out, okay? It's not like it's something on top that's mimicking what's directly underneath it. So, that's what this in, the button is, okay? And I'm giving it an offset, because it starts in the center, so I'm giving it an offset in the Y dimension of half of the screen height, plus, so half, moving up half, and then it's coming back down 60. The other one is going to the right half, I'm coming back 30. So that's what these numbers say here, okay? So I'm gonna grab all that. Okay, obviously there's an a there's an action in there that we will discuss in one second. Okay. So when you click on that, that essentially is going to flip the expanded screen will hide equal to true. Okay. And then it's going to set the start point. So the actual size of the expanded screen is equal to it's always, you know, it's following the state variable start point. So we're setting the start point back start points back equal to the return point, okay? And then once it reaches the return point, then we could say um, the expanded screen shown is equal to false, okay? And the reason we do that is because just what well, the minute we bring it back, when we hit uh, equal to false, everything kind of closes up. And what we're doing, the reason we have this will hide, this will hide is allowing us, if you remember, the position, usually this expanded view gets into position, and then it flips, it instant, instantly flips from opacity of 0 to 1, and then it expand out, expands outwards. But that's because the opacity had no transition time. Now, if we left it with no transition time, then what we end up with is something that flips completely uh, off when you click the X here without first going back to its original position, which would not be smooth. So this essentially is saying 
it's it will hide is essentially a binary that's just determining whether or not we're uh, showing the view or hiding the view and determining whether or not we need to actually um, wait so we're, we're, we're waiting essentially to hide the uh, the expanded view based on expanded screen will hide so that's what is inside here so first thing we say expanded screen will hide is true then we set the start point equal to the return point that's making everything smaller when we say expanded screen shown is equal to false that's changing all the other things like the corner radius and the other things that changed with um, that changed with the expansion and then on a, on a timer we're saying 0.6 seconds later you can change the expanded screen will hide uh, equal to false again okay so this indicator essentially is just helping us determine the animation the opacity shift of the expanded view on top of the scroll view okay so that's the action and you've already understood the contents of the button so I'm going to close up the button okay so now I can actually probably click play and I should be able to click on one of these you'll get half the picture here okay but what you're missing still is the rest here is this the geometry view so let's look at what we got left we need to actually actually we need to take um, threat all this content here Actually, next up is the scroll view. Let's look at the scroll view next. Okay, so that's underneath the Z stack. So we have the scroll view. Okay, and that scroll view contains all of this. Notice this is all one big scroll view. Okay, so scroll view is going to contain a V stack. Okay, there's a lot of items in here, but essentially. It's the recreation of this view, okay, with some expandable options. So, what we have in here, let's go ahead and just kind of close, make things smaller so you can see better. So, we have that scroll view with a V stack. Inside of it's the Z stack, okay? And so, everything in here, this entire Z stack, okay, including Z index.1. All of that is literally just recreating this view and its expanded form up to here. Okay, that's all that we've created so far. So I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna move it over, and we'll talk about the differences. Okay, so this item dot image is still the same, resizable, scale to fill, all those are the same. Uh, this offset we don't even need that anymore. So I'm just gonna comment it out. You can keep it in case we end up deciding to keep it. Okay. And then we're saying the width starts out as item width, but for the minute we toggle it, expanded screen underscore show, this is a ternary operator. Once we toggle that on, it changes from SV width to the expanded width, to the entire screen of the entire, entire width of the entire screen. So that's what, that's what happens when I click right here. Watch, ready? That's that outward shift, okay? And then the height is always going to be equal to item height. That's saying that it's always going to be this tall, no matter what, okay? So that's what the image looks like. We are clipped background color. We can give it the foreground color like we did somewhere else. Edges ignoring safe area. Okay. Um, and that will allow us that will allow us to uh, hop up into this area up here. Okay. And that was one change that was made. Okay. And so that's the image portion. Then underneath it we have the remember that underneath that we had the V stack. And we have the spacer, and then we have the V stack and inside of it. That V stack had H stack, spacer, H stack. Okay. The difference is in is that in the scroll view it was a button, and right now it's not inside of a button because once I click on it, once I click on it, I don't want it to be a button anymore. I just want it to be a view. Okay. That's why we don't have it inside of a button like we did above. Okay. But it's the same principles. So we have uh, an H stack. Okay. That's formatted almost the same. A couple changes you can kind of read through or just do whatever you think looks best to your eye. Okay. And then we have the spacer. Okay. That's kind of creating the space here. And then we have the H stack again. Okay. And so that's what it, cre it creates an identical image here when it's when the expanded screen shown is equal to false. But then when you look at it being equal to true, it has a few changes. Okay. So, not much change inside there. But then, if you look at, if you look at the frame, 
of the so if you look from here, we have the image and we have the V stack. We say the width, okay, of that entire thing is no longer just going to be equal to SV width. It's going to be equal to whatever the expanded screen start point width is. So that's what allows it to start small and match up and expand outwards. Okay. So now what we have left is the height. Okay, the height of the Z stack. Okay. And so that Z stack right here has a height equal to item height and a Z index. Uh, looks like we just missed. Yeah. Okay, and, and what we did is we also gave this entire thing a Z index of one. So that way when this thing, when this text here closes up, this room always remains on top. Okay. So I'm just going to keep the, all the things that I chose to delete. I'm just going to keep those. And so the next part here is we're going to bring that text over. All right. And that's going to go right underneath the Z stack. Okay. So right underneath the Z stack. So it's like this. Okay. Put underneath the Z stack. One big thing is that inside that Z stack, we need to make sure that we have, if you look here, we had a V stack. That encompassed both of those items. So V stack. So that V stack included that Z stack and this text. Okay. Spacing of zero. Okay. And then we just needed to bring that whole scroll view that was supposed to be inside of the Z stack right there. Okay. So now we'll go back, and we are essentially just missing. Remember, we already actually got rid of this button. Sorry about that. That button's gone. All we have left for this entire thing is just this right here. Let's talk about this last piece of code, okay? So these are going to be some some properties that go on the outside of scroll view, okay? Let's go to scroll view. Let's actually run this. Make sure everything still looks good, okay? Good, everything looks great. So these look off, right? Obviously, but that's because we haven't put the proper pieces, the last few attributes on scroll view, okay? So inside of Z stack, let's go to scroll view. Scroll view has the following things. It has, let's click on it. You can see that. There you go. It's good to go. Okay, so let's talk about the last few pieces that we had to put on scroll view. We said that. The width of scroll view inside of this any view, and so we had geometry reader. So just to refresh, okay, don't forget. So we had white in the background, we had our overall scroll view on top, and then we had the geometry reader that had an internal Z stack with the scroll view. Okay, and that's this right here. That's this scroll view. Okay, that includes the items on top. Okay, that that had all this stuff up here. Okay, and then it also had the text, this description in the bottom. Okay. So, minimizing scroll view, um, we said that its frame, okay, its width is going to be equal to the expanded screen starting point, and its height is going to be the expanded screen starting point height as well. So that's always being managed properly. Its background is clear. Okay, otherwise, when I drag down, I'd be kind of getting some ugly. You know, I, it would be white no matter what. And that's not what the original one does. Okay, um, the original one does let us swipe down to hide things, but to be honest, we're not going to get into that because that's a whole other beast. So does it leave a little bit desire to, to be desired down here? Yeah, maybe a little bit. You know, we could probably want the bottom to be white, and we could probably do something uh, to do that. But, uh, you know, that's kind of just outside the scope of this. And then we have a corner radius, okay? So the corner radius originally was 15, okay? Because the, the corner radius of the items underneath were 15. And we're saying when the expanded screen is shown, you need to switch that from 15 to 0, turn your operator right there, right? And the animation of that, of both the frame and the corner radius is an ease and out, okay? And it's going to be a duration of 0.3. I don't even need to have this ternary operator to be honest, it's 0 0.3, okay? So save it and run it. Hmm. We're missing just that. There we go. So now, there it is, all right? 
So then we also have the offset. The offset is always going to be the expanded screen star point min x and min y for x and y respectively. Okay, and that's it. So those are the last few things that I had added on top there. Okay, so when I go like this. Now everything it looks the way that it does when we had started. All right. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.